guys I'm back with another cosplay video today I'm talking about Harley Quinn so I have a soft spot for Harley Quinn because I grew up watching the animated series and that's kind of where my Harley Quinn thing starts from um, I didn't you know discover her after Suicide Squad I didn't become a fan because she became mainstream. I was really excited when she did get attention because stuff started to trickle in places. Uh, Harley Quinn merchandise was like impossible to find. And then when she hit mainstream, it was like she blew up and so many people knew about her. And it was kind of one of those things kind of I discussed about um, Spider Gwen. I loved it, but in the same way, there are so many Harley Quinns everywhere. Um, so it's like intense. So I'm just going to start with um, my just random stuff I have that's Harley Quinn. So when Suicide Squad came out, I of course bought part of her costume and I didn't really want to commit to doing the whole thing. So this is actually the Suicide Squad shirt um, from Hot Topic. It actually is the Suicide Squad. This is kind of, when they first released this, you couldn't find, um, there wasn't like the one with like the blue sleeve or anything kind of on the internet. This was kind of like the first one I had found and I bought this one and um, it doesn't have the tears and the holes and things in it. I wasn't really sure that I wanted to like completely deface my shirt. I kind of was like, well, it would be cute just to wear. So that's what I really like. It's, I don't have anything bad to say about it. It's, it's really cute. Um, it kind of was like a lot, but you know, licensed stuff from Hot Topic is always way more than I want to pay. Um, so these are my shorts, shorts I'm using, uh, bikini bottoms like they're literally um like a swimsuit and they're kind of I want to say they're kind of high, high waisted but they're really not um so these are the itchiest things ever I actually it was another thing when I bought these these were really hard to come by um I got these off Etsy I'm not exactly sure who made them they don't have a lining in them at all so I will tell you that they are so itchy. Actually, here's, here's the brand. Um, Cosplaycompany.com is the company that made them. And they're like exactly what she wears. And they fit like the right, they're low-waisted and everything. And um, they're really cute and they're fine. Um, once again, I kind of think I paid a lot for these. Um but that was kind of the first ones that I could find online that were like a reasonable price. Um, so I got those. These are just um, little leggings I have. The red on this is so like aggressively bright considering like other things I have of Harley Quinn's are like a darker color. Um, these are actually off Amazon. These are just, I don't have anything to go with these. I keep thinking I'll get a cute little crop top with them. Um, but. These are off Amazon if you're interested. I always thought they were really cute. That was probably like one of my first things I bought that was Harley Quinn apparel that wasn't like a t-shirt or anything. Um, so let's just start with my actual costume. Get down to the nitty gritty. So I'm gonna tell you why I have this costume and why I don't own a different one. Um, since I grew up watching the animated Harley Quinn with the jumpsuit and her cowl and she looks like a little jester. That is the version of Harley Quinn that I was drawn to. That was the Harley Quinn that I grew up with. That's the Harley Quinn that I wanted to cosplay as. And I will say that with that being kind of a popular character, it's kind of hard to come by. Um, so there's a lot, a lot of different Harley Quinn um, jumpsuits available. Um, there's a lot of them on eBay. There's a lot of, there's tons and tons of them on Etsy. 
they're really expensive. I personally wanted it to look really like hers and her costume has I almost want to say her costume looks like it's made of felt like in the animated series it doesn't have a lot of shine to it you know it's animated so it's hard to say like exactly what her costume is supposed to be made of um I like the ones that look leathery um of course it's hard to find them that most places can't call them the Harley Quinn jumpsuit or, you know, they just call them like Jester, the Harlequin, something, something. And they're like, I mean, I've checked so many different, when I was looking for a Harley Quinn costume, I checked every like Halloween store website. I was on like lingerie websites that sell like, har or they, Halloween costumes. Um, like Yandy, for instance, they do have a few, I believe. And, you know, Amazon has some, they, um, and the problem that I have with it is some of them don't have the, like, I don't even know what to call it. It's like the, the collar. It's the jester collar with the pom-poms. A lot of them do not have that. They have like a zipper down the front. Um, I was looking for something very close to what she had. Um, and there is one. And it is by Ruby's. And it's exactly like what you would expect. Um, it looks like the photo that they show of it looks screen accurate until I did some like you know I I don't just blindly order things I always like check things out read reviews check measurements you know try to find people that have reviewed it that are similar sizes to me I look at the photos um you know I read good and bad comments because I want to see like and then if they don't have that then it's just a gamble you're just random so that costume is sewn backwards and I'm not gonna say that a lot of people I there are reviews on Amazon for instance that have reviewed it and said that they realize that it's backwards and there are people that I think just buy it and wear it and don't realize that it's backwards and maybe they know it's backwards and it doesn't bother them once again though that is something that bugs me so much because it is a licensed Harley Quinn outfit. It has nothing. It wasn't any, it's not like they cut corners. Like I have the Wonder Woman costume from Ruby's and it was obviously cheaper to not add all these extra little elements that I'm like the back. I understand why it's plain. Um, and little things like that. I'm not expecting a whole lot from like a $30 costume. But the Ruby's Harley Quinn costume, if it was sewn with the collars flip-flopped, it would be perfect. There's no, there's nothing wrong with it. And it wasn't any harder for them to do it correctly. It's just, I don't think they realize whoever sewed it is sewing it backwards. I don't know. It's so screwed up. Every time I see it, I just, I giggle. So this one, there's actually a new one floating around online that I've been eyeballing that's just like this one that I own, but instead of kind of having all of these different patterns and things, it's really, um, it's kind of a dark gloomy kind of Harley Quinn and it doesn't have the collar at all or the cowl. Um, it's just the jumpsuit, but I really, really like that one. And I'm going to tell you the things I don't like about this one. Um, but you know, I, I do believe that this costume was $20. 18. I mean, it was, it was very reasonable. I was really, really, really happy when it came. So I will tell you what size this is. Cause I ordered big, um, because I remember seeing the reviews. So this is a large, it is 88% polyester and 12% spandex. So it's very stretchy of course, but when I was reading reviews, a lot of people were like, you need to size up. And I'm sorry to say there were a lot of people that were like, reviewing it kind of unfairly because I don't think they were sizing up enough or they had sized up to the biggest size they made and the costume just 
um, doesn't fit them right. Um, I'm sorry to say it's kind of not a very forgiving costume. You kind of can see everything. Um, so, you know, that's kind of all I have to say. Like I am obviously wearing a large, I normally wear small in clothing. So that's kind of the reference. I mean, that's a big size up from what I would normally wear. And this fits me like a glove. So this is the Harley Quinn costume that I have. Um, the costume, like I said, on Amazon, that's the licensed one. Red is here. Black is here. Red is here. Black is here. And it just flip flopped and it is wrong. So this costume, all the red parts have this circle pattern on it. And all the black sections have an X kind of, almost looks like a chain kind of uh, fencing, kind of grungy design. And it has all of this, um, ignore like the fuzzies. Apparently these are like shutting on my outfit. Um, it has all this shading like on the chest area down here. Somebody online reviewed this and said that they felt like the shading made them look fat. Like it makes you look like you have a pudgy stomach. It's just the shading of like below your stomach. Um, and then like the leg is shaded here. I actually really like the shading on the red. I, I think it's great. Um, so my only thing is I don't have them out. Apparently I didn't grab those, but I had to buy separate gloves and I did get them off eBay. I had to buy a set of red and a set of black so I could get the one black glove and the one red glove that I needed. So the black of glove matches up with this red side and the red glove you would wear on your other hand. So I couldn't, you know, check the collars when I ordered the gloves. And when I ordered my gloves, they are a lot more like this collar red versus this red. And I personally like this collar better than this, but my gloves don't quite match. Of course, they're not directly against the red, but that's something that kind of, they're different. It's just a different material and it's a different color and there's nothing really I could do about it, but this one didn't have gloves with it. So, you know, um, and then my other kind of little gripe about this is I don't know who picked kind of where to put these, um, little diamond patterns. This one is down here on the wrist almost, and that one's fine. And then this one is like almost sewn in your armpit, which is a really awkward place. Like if they would have just moved it like right here, it would have been better. I mean, I don't know why they, oh no, they put it there. There's actually the rest of it kind of here. And then there is one right here on the, like almost by your butt, I guess it's right below. There's no more on the back of that leg. And then on the front, there's a pattern down here and there's a pattern right here on the hip and these are in really good places. I just kind of feel like this one that's right here is kind of, it's kind of just weird. I don't know why. Um, so this comes with like the little neck, um, like turtleneck addition on the costume, which I really liked. Um, and it came with printed, um, like white, like the collar is printed onto the outfit and then it has like printed little tiny circles that are supposed to look like the pom-poms. So the reason why mine doesn't look like that anymore is I took felt and glued like a new, you know, whole material to the costume. And I, I did have smaller pom-poms and I haven't photoed, photographed this, um, since I've added these really big ones, these pom-poms I got from Hobby Lobby, I think it's from Hobby Lobby really really big ones um and I just glued all this stuff on with fabric glue and you know felt is so cheap like I think I had like two dollars maybe in felt um to do this so the only thing I have to say about this is because the zipper goes down the middle which is not a hidden zipper I kind of almost feel like it would have been better if they would have done a black or red zipper because it just would have blended in better of course you would have seen it really obvious up here. So I don't know, maybe it's better that it's white. And I don't think I can really paint it. So it's just, it's just a white zipper. Um, but this pom pom I had to kind of put off center. You can see that little printed circle. That's the printed circles that were here before. So I really like it now that I've added the big pom poms. That's kind of all I've done to this costume. I haven't done anything like 
crazy. I haven't modified it. I didn't sew it in or anything. That's just exactly the way it came to me. Um, like I said, there is a new costume out that I think is really cool and kind of dark and gritty and I really like it, but I'd have to make my own, um, my own collar for it, which would be fine. I just, I'm not a really confident sewer. I can sew, make like little changes to costumes and like I sew curtains and things all the time and pillows and things for my house, but I don't usually make costumes and I would actually need like an actual pattern. I'm not good at like patterning out my own outfit. Like I don't know the human body that well to shape it and things. So yeah, that's something I just, I haven't tackled myself. So when I first started wearing that costume, I took these boots that were boots that I wore all the time and they, I got new ones. I kind of usually buy new combat boots every season because I wear them to death. So I took the red one and I painted it red, which has cracked off because of the paint I used. So don't use that. Um, and I painted like this Harley Quinn on the side and then I painted, and they're not laced up right now, and then I painted Harley Quinn on the side of this black boot. And I really like these, except for my my red boot was really dark compared to my costume. And I wore this these boots a few times. Um, then I added these gigantic pom-poms to those boots. But see, once again, see how my reds are different colors. That kind of drives me crazy. Um, but then I had these boots. Um, and I actually, I tore a little tiny spot on this, it's on this red one, um, on the front. And then I was like, well, these boots are like either trash or I'll make them into something else. So they were just really cheap ones for, from Walmart. And they are just like a little slouchy boot. And then I added this material at the top to make it look like a cuff. Um, and then these are really big pom-poms. I just poked a hole through the top and then they have, um, like a little stretchy rubber band thing that these are attached to. So then I, I just like duct tape them inside the shoe down here. So they're not actually glued to the shoe. I actually lost one of these pom-poms fell off when I was at Comic-Con one day. And then I was like, all right, well, we got to go back upstairs and fix my pom-pom because it looks jank. So I want to take, um, black glitter and glitter this entire boot like really shiny glittery and then the reason why I want to do that is because my reds don't match again this boot this is painted and this is just material so my two reds don't match and I really want to glitter this one red too so I have a glittery red boot and the glittery black boot but these are pretty much the closest I can get to kind of what her shoes look like without buying actual Harley Quinn boots um, these ribbons I usually put in my hair, which is not something I have to really talk about. Okay, so these cuffs, I always store them in this Tupperware because I don't want them to get smashed. These little cuffs I should have bought probably from someone that would make them for me. But I made them myself and they were a pain. And I kind of, the ribbon was kind of expensive. Like the whole thing just... By the time I probably spent so much time making them and sewing them and everything and buying the material, I probably should have just paid the money and bought them. I want to say they were like $25, I think, on Etsy to get these. So I don't know what size ribbon this is. I want to say it's like three inch wide, two and a half inches, two something. They're pretty wide. Um, so I have this really thick um, elastic inside. And what I did was like accordion fold this ribbon completely around so that it was just like a stack of ribbon. And then I followed a tutorial on YouTube, I believe. Um, and then I sewed around this whole top edge to connect it. And then you have to sew the whole bottom. So you sew both sides of this. And then I had to sew them together. So then it made a circle. And then you have to sew it to the elastic. And I mean, they're really cute and they work fine. Um, they're a little dirty looking. Apparently it's more makeup nonsense. So these are my little cuffs and this really helps with my costume and my gloves not matching because there is a transition of this white cuff between my red glove and things. So that does help, but they're really cute and these turned out really well. I kind of was surprised I was even able to make them. Sometimes I start projects and I'm like, this is never going to work. 
Um, so this is my Harley Quinn wig. It has seen better days. Um, it is getting kind of old and it has so much hairspray right here because I always um, swoop my bangs over on my wig. I really love this wig though because it you can wear it just like this. It's very versatile. Um, it's just super cute. I, when I first got it, it looked so good and this is like years later. Um, and then it came with these little, uh, they still sell this wig on Amazon. Um, I can't say enough good things about this wig. It's super cute. These are losing their curl, but they were like super curly and you just clip them in your hair. And also what's great about that wig is you get two of these, but if you wanted to just wear that by itself or you wanted to wear just one ponytail in the back, you could do that and then that would be like it's a three-way you can wear that wig basically um so that wig's great i mean it's it's definitely it's needing a little bit of love it's it's not looking really great um and i don't think that wig was overly expensive either um and it's a really nice collar too it's not really like weirdly yellow it's, it's pretty close to like a natural hair collar so now for my big prop things so let's just start with this this is a bat that i found at a yard sale for super cheap this is right before the suicide squad movie was first um like filming and they were releasing small bits and pieces of stuff from the movie and i caught a glimpse of her bat and was like i want to make a harley quinn bat but that was before the movie had came out no one had any idea what was written on the bat in writing which mine is just written in sharpie and for some reason the sharpie is just like i don't even use this bat but it's just like it's just fading i think from the sun so it really needs a touch-up job but it looks so much better when i did it but i scoured the internet to see little photos of this bat the writing on it and i wrote down every single line and then certain words are written in super in, in different colors. So there's writing in red and there's writing in like a tealy blue color. And then the rest is written in black. And I spent forever actually had people messaging me online after I made this asking me, what does the bat say? Because I'm trying to make one and I don't know what it says. So I was sending all these people um, the whole line of what it says online. And it was so funny. So... Yeah, I just, I really made this for, I mean, I made it for a photo and it hangs on my wall in my, in this room. Um, so that's fun. Of course, it's like an actual bat, so it's kind of a weapon. Um, I will talk about my cupcake next. Um, my cupcake, I have it saved in my Instagram highlights, um, how I made it. It is cardboard internally and cardboard on this bottom section. Um, so what I did was I, I cut out this like shape that I wanted the bottom of the cupcake to be. And then I started making these, um, like angles to make it look like, um, the cupcake liner. And then I, oh my gosh, um, it's got kind of like a circle core inside of it with like supports. And I have pictures, I mean, there's pictures of me working on it, um, saved on there. So if you're interested in making your own cupcake, um, and then the whole thing, when I got done internally building it, like structurally, this is a dog ball, like a dog, big giant tennis ball. Um, it had a hole in it. My dogs punctured it and I was like, Hey, I bet I could cut this apart and make this into the top, um, like bomb. Um, so that's what that is and it's just resting on like a piece of cardboard inside so i stacked it up kind of the way i wanted it then i used spray foam to spray foam this entire um cupcake and then the rest of it's like decoupage covering how i do like my wonder woman uh shield i talked about how i did that um and things like that so it that way it's not just straight up cardboard and the edges are covered and things um, I obviously didn't do it down here because you can tell that there's cardboard right here. Um, so then I carried it like that for a little while and I didn't like that you could see like 
the spray foam when it dries, I try to sand it. Um, it's not my first rodeo with making spray foam cupcakes. I used to make small ones. Um, and this one, you could kind of see the porous holes in it. And I didn't like it. So then I opted to take silicone, like caulking, and I like iced it like a cake. And then once it dried, it dried super shiny because, you know, silicone's like that. And it's kind of got a little bit of a rubbery texture and it's kind of foam because it's spray foam. Um, and, you know, you have to, when you're working with spray foam, you have to work fast because spray foam um, has like a little shooting nozzle, like straw. And if you don't work fast um, and use it all, it just um, will clog itself up and then it's trash. So you have to work fast and work um, outside and with lots of newspapers and things. And um, it's very goopy. So, and you do not want to get it on your hands. So you just need to spray and be like pretty careful. And then if you've got some, and it expands. So you have to be kind of careful because this like is expands, like you may start with a small section and it'll get like so big. So if you've never worked with spray foam, maybe ask someone that has or test, do a test. Um, so yeah, this was, I sanded it and got like kind of the smooth. And then these are just, um, they are like the tops to a balloon weight. That's what they are. They're like sparkly little decorations that were on top of a balloon weight that I cut apart to put on here. So this cupcake is really fun. I always get a lot of um, compliments on it. Like no one ever sees Harley Quinn's a giant cupcake. Um, but when my costume did not have the silicone icing on it, I was noticing that the texture that was on here was wanting to grab my costume because of what it's made out of and this was kind of and now that this is all sealed and nice and really smooth it doesn't do that so that's just another fun tip so the big elephant in the room is this giant hammer this is my second hammer that I built the first one I did just with things I had on hand really really cheap and this one I actually um I spent a long time making this so this is like a cardboard, like almost like telescoping pole. I don't even know. My husband had them at work. Um, I don't know what came on them, but they kind of had like extra pieces that like slid down inside and it was already black. So, and it's the perfect like size for both of your hands to fit around it. My old hammer had a really thick hammer um, pole and it was just hard to hold on to. Um, and my hammer was also like, a little bit bigger than this one and I just felt like it was really hard to maneuver at comic-con it also had a longer pole if you're making a hammer for Harley Quinn I do recommend making your pole shorter because to be honest once you put this on your shoulder you're just left with like this little bit sticking out I, this was actually a lot longer and I was like you know what chop this off and make this shorter because it I don't want to be hitting anyone um when I'm at like comic-con or anything plus it's easier to travel with um and it fits in cars a lot easier. So this actually does have the cement tube inside. Um, I actually have this saved in my Instagram highlights also how I build it. Um, so what I did is there is the cement tube inside, which is just a circle tube. It doesn't flare on the ends, how mine has like this concave. Um, and then I, I think there might be cardboard. So the cement tube is cardboard on the inside. And I do believe that I cut cardboard like bigger on each end so that these are way bigger than the actual cement tube. And I did that on each end. And then I got the boards and these are actually like, I think they're camping mats. Um, I think is what they are. Um, they're, they were blue. One was like a dark blue and one was a lighter blue. And this one kind of has, was thicker foam and it was kind of um a little bit more textured and this was really smooth and a lot thinner so for instance these straps right here they're made out of the same end cap foam these are the only thing made out of this really thick foam um so I took the boards and I used a dremel to dremel well I kind of carved with a um exacto knife into the boards to get like 
the wood grain design and then I took a Dremel and I kind of Dremeled them wider and I made kind of bigger ruts and chipped off the edges and everything and then I used a heat gun to heat gun all of the boards and get the bend and do be careful when you're using a heat gun if you've never used one before. I was actually my first rodeo with a heat gun and I actually really liked it and I think I'm a pro at it. Um, same thing with my Dremel. I had never really used my Dremel before until I worked on this. So all fun things. Um, so yes, I did that to every single board. Then every board got painted with red Plasti Dip and then black Plasti Dip. So every single board is like that. Then when I went to put them on the board, I knew that they were going to have little gaps between. Yeah, see how this one has a big gap and this one has a smaller gap. Every board then got kind of a fill in right here all the way around. And this took some math to figure out exactly how each board was going to fit on here. I actually have three reds and three blacks just for reference. And they fit on here great. Like I've seen some people make some hammers and have the boards not match up right or have, you know, you have to put a sliver in that's a different color or that your colors don't match up right. Like if you don't do the right amount of like three and three and you do four and three, you're going to end up with a weird pattern going on and you're going to have to do two different colors on the bottom or something to try to flub it in. Um, so do your research before you just start going willy nilly. Um, so then I... Uh, I took a wash of like black paint and that's how I got this grunge kind of look. The end caps are just various browns and whites. I kind of made this taupe color. I painted all of this. I grunged this out with like a little natural sponge. Um, and I used like a lot of different like blacks, browns, whatever. And I got this tree trunk kind of look going on. This side I did whack a bat. These are just little wooden letters from Walmart in like a bag in the craft section. And I hot glued them on here. This is the same foam. I cut it out. These are actually foam letters that I traced out with um, a stencil. And then we had to cut every individual letter. And I say we, my husband got to do a lot of this like exacto knife cutting for me. I think he cut all these letters out. So I painted all the sides of the letters because they were blue, black, and then the fronts are all red. And then I used um, a paintbrush that was like a bristle brush and I flicked this like blood look across the front um, just for added stuff. These straps are the same metallic gray silver paint that I use on my Wonder Woman stuff. Um, and that's what all of these are. These actually cover, you know, the part of the base that covers it. This is just an extra thing. I thought that this would be more comfortable to hold on to if I wanted to. All of these little rivet designs, if you listen, they are eyeballs. Um, they are googly eyes that I hot glued on and I made like rivets. Um, and yeah, I mean, I walked around at Comic-Con and I had people actually stopping me, telling me that, and Artist Alley um, artist and, you know, different vendors actually like flagged me down and tell me that this was one of the best Harley Quinn bats that they had ever seen. Um, and they were like, did you buy it or did you make it? And I was like, oh, I made it. Um, but I'm not kidding. I don't have that much in this. Um, I did already have all the foam. So that kind of probably would be a little expensive. The Plasti Dip, I also believe we had. Maybe not the red, but I knew we had black Plasti Dip. So, and I have a lot of craft paint. So honestly, though, I want to say I have like the cement tubes maybe like ten dollars and then you know plastic dips not super cheap but i think it was only one bottle of each one so you need a black bottle and you need a white bottle and i do believe i clear coated the entire thing after i was done but i love this bat so much um i think that's why i always want to dress as, dress up as harley quinn i will say my bat's a little my bat my hammer my hammer's a little heavy gosh how many times did i say bat my hammer's a little heavy and i will say that i carried this for a weekend to comic con and I had actually bruised my shoulder from the weight of carrying this bat, this bat, this hammer. Um, it just, it totally annihilated my shoulder. And the next morning when I had to put it back up on my shoulder, I was like, I think I bruised my shoulder from carrying that. And I was like, I'm going to have to carry the hammer on my other shoulder. But, you know, it's a very good size. It's not ridiculously huge. You could totally make this your own in different 
designs. I really wish I had like Harley Quinn's little baby suicide squad bat. Um, it's really cute. Um, but no, I'm, I'm very proud of the hammer. I mean, it, it took a long time. It was a lot of steps, but, um, it really wasn't super expensive. Um, I don't know how much the foam rolls of stuff r would run you. Um, but the rest of it, like, I want to say, I don't, I don't have more than like, even if you would buy that, there's no way you'd have more than 50 bucks in this. Like I'd say like 30 bucks probably. Um, but yeah, it just goes to show you, like, it doesn't take, it doesn't take that much money to make a lot of things. Like I made this out of cardboard the first time and it, she was looking rough. I pretty much just took my exact design I made from that and just rebuilt it out of foam. And I did the really good concave. Um, it just like, that was completely free. But I spent so much time working on that and I wasn't really proud of it afterwards. And this is something where um, sometimes it does pay to spend a little bit more on, you know, quality materials um, because it'll turn out better. Um, but it can be done cheap. Um, but yeah, that's my Harley Quinn stuff. Um... I love being Harley Quinn. She's just super fun and everyone, is, she's very easily recognized. Um, I will say I see tons of Harley Quinns when you go to Comic-Con, but the jumpsuit animated version of her, she's a little harder to come by, which I obviously love because um, there's a lot of people dressed as the new um, Birds of Prey Harley Quinn. There's like so many outfits with that, which I think it's fun like she's always it's great because they are always changing her costume so there's so many different versions of her so if everybody wants to be Harley Quinn then there can just be like a ton of different Harley Quinns which is okay I mean I know Harley Quinn, Quinn and people that dress as Harley Quinn get ragged on a lot but um it's just kind of the atmosphere and Harley Quinn is so fun to be and she's crazy so it's kind of acceptable if you want to just be off the wall crazy that day and it it kind of when I put it on always makes me kind of really happy <laughs> so I'll see you guys next time bye